the Caladium, coveted by plant enthusiasts, nurseries and landscapers worldwide for its originality of color combinations and unmistakable heart-shaped leaves. Lake Placid, Florida, known as the Caladium capital of the world, is named for a good reason. The outlying areas of the town are dotted with what can best be described as lake bottom muck. The presence of this hardy soil, along with the Sunshine State's warm climate, makes caladium production ideal. Although early Europeans are credited with the first hybridization of caladiums, Floridians Henry Nearling, Theodore L. Mead, and Frank M. Joyner developed caladium cultivars in the Sunshine State. Captain Webb and Jim Mitchell first brought caladiums to Lake Placid in the late 1920s. Today, Lake Placid accounts for over 90% of commercial produced caladiums worldwide. Varieties of caladiums are as abundant as their colors. John Peed, Blaze, and Postman Joyner are some of the caladiums in the red variety. Some of the white varieties are June Bride, White Queen, and Mrs. Arno Nearly. The pinks, although not as colorful as the reds, are quite spectacular nonetheless. They include Rosebud, Carolyn Wharton, and Pink Beauty. Commercial producers start planting in early April and usually end in mid-May. Before bulbs are actually planted commercially, they are dipped in a hot water bath at approximately 120 degrees for 30 minutes to kill nematodes, a common soil-dwelling pest. This also will kill any other fungi that might affect the bulb seeds. After drying for approximately three days, the bulbs are cut into smaller, more manageable pieces while they're covered with pecan flower. Since not all the pieces have the eyes that will ultimately produce growth, the large volume of pieces ensure that at least some will produce caladiums during planting. In addition, this dusting with the pecan flower prevents the bulb pieces from sticking together during the actual planting process in the fields. Before the bulb planting can begin, two processes must be completed. Soil irrigation and drainage, and fumigation. Soil irrigation typically is done by one of two processes. Mole holes or above ground sprinkling. A mole hole is a small ditch that is created when a bullet-shaped device is pulled with a tractor from the irrigation canals through the soil, effectively allowing water to flow from the canals through the soil and ultimately to the planted bulbs. This process also helps to drain the fields and can be augmented with a more traditional above-ground sprinkling system. Soil fumigation is accomplished via a tractor-applied method. A custom-made device with rows of tube-equipped gas knives is pulled behind a special tractor. An electric flow control system is used to selectively inject fumigant through the tubes on the knives 8 to 10 inches below the surface. This method allows for fumigation of large amounts of acreage in a short amount of time. The planting process is relatively simple. The man in the rear of this vehicle is pouring crates of pecan flower covered bulbs into a mechanical sorter that allows them to be dropped precisely into the furrows cut by the tractor driven by the man in front. This method has been perfected over several decades to allow for the most fields to be planted in the least amount of time by the least amount of men and equipment.
growing all summer long. The leaves of the caladiums are mowed off. Then a mechanical harvester digs the bulbs by variety. The bulbs are brought up by a mechanized ramp and deposited into a specially designed trailer. The ramp also helps to separate some of the dirt from the caladiums that have been harvested. After the newly harvested bulbs have been delivered back to the barn, a team of workers clean and separate the bulbs according to size. First, a worker assists in getting the bulbs from the trailer. The bulbs then travel through a warm water bath, effectively removing the remaining dirt. From there, they pass through the hands of workers who separate the bulbs once again according to size. At the end of the run, the bulbs are stacked in color and number coded trays that are labeled according to the caladium bulb size and variety. This assures that all customers who order bulbs will be happy with their purchase. The bulbs are then placed in a drying room, again stacked together by variety, where they are dried for 7 to 10 days. The well-ventilated room is kept at 90 degrees or above to ensure proper drying of the bulbs. On the shipping side, the sorted caladium bulbs are again sorted for size. The bulbs are packed according to the variety and size ordered by the customer along with dried rice hulls which will act as padding during shipping. The boxes are then hand-labeled for bulk shipping direct to nurseries, through brokers, and direct to homeowners all over the world. <coughs> if you want to plant caladiums in your own yard, there are some simple steps to follow. First, the bulb. The knobby, hairy side of the bulb with the many visible eyes is the top. If you plant the bulb upside down, the caladium will still grow, but emergence of the leaves will be delayed. Plant any time when the night temperature is 65 degrees or above. Day temperatures of 80 to 90 degrees are ideal. Caladiums enjoy growth in almost any type of soil. What you'll need is any highly organic soil that will hold moisture. In general, the sandier the soil you plant in, the more water you'll need. It's important to note that you need to have approximately one and a half to two inches of soil above the top of the bulb to ensure that the new roots, which develop on the upper surface, will not dry out. Remember to always keep the bulbs warm and moist. And remember that the warmer the temperature at time of planting, the quicker the bulbs will grow. To ensure proper nutrition, use a balanced fertilizer, such as those sold by your local garden store. Use the fertilizer only once per growing season. Check with a Florida grower or nursery to ensure you are using the correct fertilizer. If you're planting either fancy leaf or lance cultivars, place the large tubers six to eight inches apart. Water initially and keep soil moist but not waterlogged. Generally speaking, caladiums will grow in any type of sun, but there are some varieties that are ideal for growth and direct sunlight. These include Fire Chief, White Queen, Florida Elise, and Red Flash. The rule is that the sunnier the area you plant the bulb, the more water you'll need to hydrate the caladium. Again, check with a local caladium grower if you need more information about planting available varieties and their tolerance to sunlight. If you have an affinity for indoor plants, caladiums will not disappoint. Cut leaves make a colorful display. Simply put the cut leaves in a vase with water. 
They will wilt initially, but once they suck up the water, you'll be amazed at how colorful they'll become. They'll stay fresh for about three weeks. After the month of November, or when soil temperatures dip below 60 degrees, the leaves will begin dying back, and the tubers will enter their dormant stage. You may desire to dig your tubers during this stage and store them indoors until the next planting season. To accomplish this, simply pull the tubers from the soil, clean them of any excess soil, and air dry them in a sunny and warm location where the temperature is over 65 degrees. Leave the foliage attached to the tuber during the drying process until it falls away naturally. Once the leaves have dried, cut them off. Pack the dry tubers in peat moss and store in a breathable container, such as a potato sack or pantyhose. Store the container in a well-ventilated area with a minimum temperature of 65 degrees. Whether you're passionate about fancy leaf caladiums or lance leaf caladiums, these tropical plants will provide you with visual enjoyment from outdoor planting areas to landscaping and cut leaves all summer long. They'll provide a continuous color accent to your home that can't be matched. The next time you replant your yard or indoor displays, try caladiums. You won't be disappointed.